Hello again, everyone. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I called it Financials Take a Hit. You'll see why shortly. We're going to take a look at the XLF, which really took a hit this last week, and the three top holdings in XLF, Berkshire Hathaway Class B, JP Morgan, and Bank of America. So stay tuned. All right, let's start off here with XLF. What we're looking at is a long-term chart. It's a weekly chart in here. And uh, I've got this labeled zero at the top like in 2007 here on XLF. I believe we're in a big cycle wave. A, B, C is the way I've got this labeled. And right now we've broken down out of a, a two-year trend line and we're rapidly approaching this long-term 10-year trend line. And I believe when we start to break that, it's really, selling is really going to accelerate. Now, what do I have? Why do I have this down here? Because in this big cycle wave pattern, this is a big flat because B retraced almost all of A. It came back to the beginning of A, okay? And typically in a large flat, especially cycle wave flat like this, we're talking about a three wave, a three wave, and a five wave. So, and then typically the five wave, the C wave, will come back down here uh, at a minimum. Well, it, you know, it's not going to go much lower than A because it got pretty low. Uh, but we'll watch and see how the wave structure, you know, unfolds. But what we're really looking at, you know, is just the first wave for, you know, as, as a first step. And we'll watch and see how it unfolds and we'll go from there. Let's take a look at the daily chart on XLF. So you can see what happened this last week. You know, it was down 49 cents on Friday, but pretty big move. Let me go back. What did it do for the week? For the week, it was down $1.86. Let me zoom in in here. Here's the picture on the week. You can see how this engulfed literally the last three weeks of trading. And, uh, you know, we gapped up at the opening, closed all the way down here. This is the lowest close in over a year on XLF. Okay, if you look back over here, we closed where? 25.11. And we're, what's the close here? 25.43, the week of September 10th. Okay, so the lowest close since the week of September 10th, 2017. So that's the picture on, uh, on XLF. Now, when I look at the daily chart in here, I am expecting this to keep unfolding in a five-wave sequence. That's what I'm looking for. Right now, we're in a third wave. Uh, and it is, it is acting strong. And I think, like I said, when we break that longer term trend line, I think selling will really accelerate. OK, let's take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. Now, um, ERK dot B is what I'm looking at. Berkshire Cath. OK, now the interesting thing here is this is a very strong performer, has been. I mean, look at this is from the low of, uh, you know, the 2009 low after the financial crisis. Very strong uptrending channel in here. And uh, I do believe that we've now got five waves complete. So now what I'm looking for, watching for, is a breakdown for this to start to roll over and to start to uh, get a series of lower lows and lower highs kind of thing. So let's take a look at the daily chart and see what's happening. Um, zoom back out just a little bit. So this is a little six month trend line I've got back from that June low. In here, and you can see what happened this last week. On Friday, it was down three dollars and eight cents, closing at two hundred four eighty eight, and a pretty big downdraft this week. This was the close of last Friday, so you can see what happened this week. And again, we're rapidly approaching this trend line, and I think when it breaks that trend line, it'll come down here and start approaching the longer term one. Okay, let's take a look at J.P. Morgan. Okay, here's the long-term chart on JP Morgan. This is a weekly chart again also. So all of the long-term charts uh, I'm talking about is the weekly chart. Now, this has also been a very strong performer from that financial crisis low in here. But I, too, believe, just like on Berkshire Hathaway Class B, I think that we've gotten five waves complete in the move up in here, okay, in this big push to the high side. And so right now, I'm looking for this to start. We've already broken this trend line of the last, uh, you know, fifth wave, the fifth primary wave. And, uh, and so we've kind of gone sideways in here, but we're at that point where I think we're getting ready to break down. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's see if there's something else I wanted to say about this. Five ways. 
downtrend near term support. Let's take a look at that. This is the daily chart and look at what's happened here the last week. It was down $1.78 on, uh, on Friday. And this week, here's the close last week. Uh, well, actually, if I go back to the weekly chart, it'll tell you right there. It was down $7.90 for the week. And we are right at this support area that came in back in June and again in October. And we're very close. I don't, did we close below the October lows? Uh, let's see, it looks like the low close here is 103.29, closed 103.28, one penny below that. Don't know how significant it is. I'm more looking at this, the, the dotted line, which is really the, uh, the dot, dotted line is about the average of these three lows in here. OK, so we're right at short term critical support. I do believe we're in a third wave down. We've really started to accelerate. I expect that if we truly are in a third wave, like I believe we are, this should start to accelerate in terms of the selling. OK, so and why are the banks having problems? The banks are having problems because the the yields are starting to invert. The three year yield has uh, inverted over the five year yield at threes versus fives. The three has gotten higher than the five-year yield. The five-year yield's dropped. The same thing is starting to happen between twos and tens, okay? And so that is what's squeezing the banks because typically they borrow short-term at short-term rates and lend at long-term rates, which are usually higher when the, when the, when the uh, curve is normal, okay? But... When things start to get a little out of whack, like they're starting to right now, the spread between twos and tens is the lowest, the, the narrowest spread since, wait for it, 2007. That's why people are starting to get a little nervous. All right, so let's take a look at Bank of America. And uh, let me go back to the weekly chart. And here's BAC. And here's Bank of America. And this is one of the weaker pictures of the three. Now, these are the th top three holdings of XLF, okay? So, uh, you know, pretty heavy, heavily weighted into XLF. But clearly, Bank of America hasn't even come close to coming back to the uh, 2007. Matter of fact, it, it peaked in 2006, uh, October, November. I guess it was November 2006. So I'm expecting in this to break down and do a similar type thing in here. And of course, we've broken this trend line, this two year trend line. And uh, and now I'm expecting this to start to accelerate rapidly, come down to this uh, trend line of the entire move since the financial crisis. Uh, if we look in here, what did it do? Down almost three dollars for the week. Let's take a look at the daily chart and you'll see it was down 85 cents on Friday. And this looks like it's, you know, really starting to accelerate also. Now, this is a third move that could be getting close to completing in here. Um, I haven't spent a ton of time on this wave count, but this is the best I've got at this point. And this is what I'm looking for. Now, oh, why did you do that? Why did you do that? That's what I'm looking for. I'm a little five wave sequence down as a first wave. And then we'll get a rally back up in here. So this is the picture on Bank of America at the moment. Right now, they all look like they're breaking down. And as you can see, where did it close? It closed below the October lows. So, you know, these are starting to confirm JP Morgan almost did. Bank of America definitely did. And so, you know, and then we start to look at a lot of the other uh, ETFs to see which ones are getting weak and doing the same thing and confirming. Uh, so uh, this is not helping the stock market. And by the way, one of the things I forgot to mention is XLF. The reason I focused on XLF this weekend, XLF was the weakest S&P sector of the 11 S&P sectors, the weakest performer for the last week. OK, it was down almost 7 percent, I believe, for the week. So uh, pretty weak picture here on the uh, on the financials. All right. That's it for this weekend. Uh, if you felt like the video was helpful and you like the video, hit the thumbs up and share the video. And if you'd like to get more insight into the S&P 500, the Nasdaq and other market related uh, type indicators, etc., head on over to my website and let me show you where I'm talking about. 
just go to joehenches.net and you can see me typing that in right there. And you pull that up and you sign up right here for the free market update videos and uh, you'll get access to those. Uh, you do that usually twice a week, uh, Wednesday and Saturday. So uh, anyway, check that out. Everyone have a great rest of the weekend. We'll talk to you on the next video.